I've always thought, similar to somebody like Ben Franklin, why not be multidimensional? I don't think you have to be confined to one box or one kind of reality. started getting interested in the low riding scene because it looked fun and I started seeing some cars cruising around our high school and uh, we would start we were going to parties and eventually we started going to Whittier Boulevard and you start seeing cars with plaques and and we thought man that looks fun my first car I had was a 66 Pontiac Tempest that was originally our family car so when I was in high school I learned how to drive in it I started trying to think about how I could make my car into a lowrider. So all I could think of was to put something heavy in the trunk. So we went over to uh, Rio Hondo uh, River and uh, we got some rocks and put them in the trunk and just lowered it that way. They started rolling around and almost denting the car. So anyway, we're just learning as we go. <laughs> so it was kind of goofy. We started seeing car clubs cruising around, like at lunchtime, clubs from different kinds of uh, areas cruising by with a plaque flying. And we thought, man, that looks cool. One time when I was in Alhambra, cruising on uh, Main Street, I saw this 52 Chevy bomb with a, a group plaque on it. And I thought, man, that's cool. He was scraping his front end. He had some hydraulics on it. And so my friend and I decided we wanted to get in group car club. He has a brother whose name was Tiny, and he was originally in a club from the 60s uh, called The Illusions. And then there was also another club uh, that was around in the 60s that we know about nowadays called The Click and uh, they had broken up for a little while and so some of the guys from the Click and the Illusions eventually came together and started a car club called Group. Uh, we ended up learning about where their meetings were and uh, we got in when I was still in high school. In 1978, the magazine was only about a year old at the time. So in those days, people in the lowrider culture weren't in magazines much and this magazine was cool because it was a way for like average people to be in a magazine. We knew that they were doing an article about the club. Uh, they asked us to meet at the San Gabriel Mission one morning. And, uh, they were doing some photos. They took a picture of my car in front of the San Gabriel Mission. And at the end of it all, we thought, uh, oh great, we're gonna, maybe we'll be in the magazine if we're lucky. A month or two later, one of the guys calls me and says, hey man, your car's on the cover of Lowrider magazine. When you think about lowriding, you kind of think about Impalas. And so I've always kind of dreamed of having one of these. This is a 1958 Chevrolet Impala. It's the first year they made Impala. It's a time when General Motors was, I think, at its wildest with the styling. Uh, you could tell at this time we were thinking a lot about going into space, and so there's a lot of uh, feeling of like speed and uh, jets and things. These are uh, good old American metal. And when you're cruising around in a vehicle like this with some good music on, it, that's a good feeling. Low riding is an uh, interesting world. It's a way you can have a lot of friendship, a lot of camaraderie, a lot of uh, joy in cruising. Something about it, it, it impresses on your heart when you have these really good times. It's just something you can't forget. I worked at a cardboard factory. I worked at a glass factory in Los Angeles. I worked at two different gas stations and taking a full load of classes at uh, East LA College. I've just always had a love of learning. Uh, while I was going to East LA College, I was still in group. It was interesting because uh, some of the people at the college thought it was strange I was in a car club and a lowrider when I pulled up with that car. And some of the guys in the club thought it was weird I was going to college. Some of my family members even said, uh, why don't you get rid of that lowrider? You know, you're not a lowrider anymore. You're going to be a professional. I had so many good times with my friends cruising in that car. It became essentially part of my DNA, part of who I am. I always kind of thought, why can't I do both, you know? And 
at that time I was kind of doing a lot of soul searching and I realized eventually I'm going to get older. I was thinking hard, what do I want to do with my life? I realized that what would make my life meaningful is if I'd try to do something to help improve this world. It might sound strange, but because I like working on cars and working on things mechanically, I realized I wanted to do some kind of surgery, but I didn't want to be a pure surgeon. And it turns out when you take obstetrics and gynecology, it's a mixture of family practice and surgery. So I realized that this is the specialty that I want to do. I am an obstetrician gynecologist, uh, essentially a physician and a surgeon. I've delivered about 9,000 babies. Uh, it's hard work. A lot of times I'm up at 3 or 4 in the morning doing difficult uh, things that are uh, dangerous and uh, challenging when everybody else is all comfy, cozy asleep. It's hard. A lot of times I'm uh, tired. Sometimes we work 100 hours a week. And um, so it's difficult, but there are a lot of rewards. I've helped save a few babies that only weigh like one pound or two pounds and uh, I still get thanks from moms years later for things like that, and so uh, <laughs> it feels good. Just because somebody says you're not able to do something or you probably can't do that, you shouldn't take that as part of who you are. You might think your life is only this way, but a lot of times if you open your mind to other possibilities, it makes your life a lot more interesting. I think the important things for success are to have a work ethic and to do something to try to help other people. I'm Steve Alvarez-Mott. I am a physician surgeon, and I'm a lowrider role model.